So today, in this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a galaxy in Blender using particle physics and some suitable force fields, and it's going to be a really simple setup. We can create particles with geometry nodes as well, but this tutorial follows the classic particle system without any use of geo nodes, so let's now focus how to create this galaxy. First, we have created four such spheres and placed them evenly along a circle. These spheres will emit a lot of particles that will run down to the center and create the galaxy. So for these spheres, we have added a particle system like this, but please remember that some of these values are specific to the duration of our animation. So if you have a different length for your animation, you may need to customize these values as suitable. And this same particle system is also added to the other three spheres as well. So if we simply now play this animation, we'll see that the particles are falling down due to the gravity force. But we actually want the particles to slowly spiral down to the center. So we have to scroll down here and expand the section called field weights. Here we have to reduce this gravity force to zero. And instead of this, from the add menu, under force field, we have to add a force field called vortex force. The settings for this vortex can be found in the physics tab. So the shape of the vortex should be plain. The strength value can be 0.75 and the value of this inflow can be set as 1. Now, if we again play the animation from the very beginning, we'll see that this time the particles are spiraling down to the center, as expected. But they are not really on a flat plane. They are taking the height of these spheres. So in order to make them coplanar, we have to first select all the spheres together using the Shift key. Then we'll reduce their height to a small value. So in the object properties, we can see that the spheres have got flat. Now if we play it again, we'll see that the particles are almost on a single plane, and we are very close to our galaxy. We need to just convert these particles into actual stars. But we can also see that there are some blank spaces in between these streams of stars or particles. So we have to also add a particle generation system for this ring, or the circle, to fill in the gaps. We can first select this ring, then also select a sphere, and then in the modifiers tab, we can use the option under this modifier, called copy to select it. This function will copy the particle system from the sphere to the ring object with the same settings. But we need a separate copy so that there are no conflicts with the spheres, so we'll make a copy of this to get a new particle system. And we can then modify the number of particles. It should be much higher than the spheres, but all other fields will remain unchanged. Now if we run the animation once again, we'll see that there are no gaps. We have an ocean of particles, while we still have the four main spirals distinctively visible. So we are kind of done with the design part, but we need to also convert these particles into actual stars to create a galaxy. So go to the Add menu and add a UV sphere. We'll rename it to Star, since it will work as the base model for all our stars. Now go to the Materials tab and create a new material, but the primary shader for this can be changed to an emission shader. We'll change its color to some light blue color to make it look like a star, and the strength can be increased to say 5. This star model will itself remain completely hidden, but we'll use it as a model for our particles. So back to the particle system for our spheres, scroll down and expand the render section, and then change this option to the object option. Then in the instance object field, we'll select the star object, which we just created, and let's also change the viewport display, so that it picks up the same star model as in the render. Then for the ring object, we'll make the same changes, so that the particles from this particle system also render as stars. But to actually see the stars, we have to go to the rendered view mode, and we must not have any other light in the scene, then we can see the stars, but they are too big in size. We can easily control the size of these stars by changing the size of our model object. Maybe we can reduce it to 0.1. So the stars are now looking quite beautiful, and the galaxy is almost ready. But the spheres and the ring are looking ugly in this composition. We have to somehow hide them. So we'll create a new material for these objects, and we'll assign a transparent BSDF. Now the ring will remain invisible in a render output, and we'll assign the same material for the spheres, in order to hide them as well. But in case you see the stars have disappeared, it's because the physics is not yet baked. So in the particle physics, under the cache section, we'll delete everything and bake all the dynamics, including any other physics in this scene, and the progress is shown in this box. Once this is done, we'll get back our stars, but they look quite dim, and we also cannot increase their size. So we'll rather increase their glow using a compositor setup. First enable the Use Nodes option, if it is not already enabled. Then go to the Add menu, and under Filter, let's add a Glare node, and place it in between these two nodes. We'll change the Glare type to Bloom, and we can go with all the default settings, no need to change their values, but we'll increase this Strength field to maybe 5. Finally, let's go back to our viewport, but in order to see a preview of the effect in this viewport, we have to pull down this menu, 
and enable the option called Always. This will enable the compositor output, so if we go to the top view and zoom in, we'll be able to see the actual picture. And if we go to the last frame, we'll get the final status, which is exactly what we need, beautiful galaxy like our Milky Way. But if we talk about Milky Way, there is a problem here. We have a perfectly circular structure, but our Milky Way is not exactly circular. It has an elliptic shape. So in order to take care of that, we have created a structure like this. We have placed two force fields on these two sides. They will force the particles this way, and the particle distribution will take an elliptic form. The settings for these force fields can be seen here. They are set up as point forces, with a strength of 3. But this will also push the particles in the Z direction, as they are point forces. So we have to restrict this movement, and we did that using a harmonic force field, which is set up with these settings, as we can see right here. Now if we again go to the camera view, and also switch over to the rendered view mode, we'll get this. We can see that this time the galaxy is elliptic in shape, just like out Milky Way, and we can now render the full animation. If you are a member of this channel, you can also download the blend file to study it further. So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.